welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happening in the world of Faith and Family Films. Now, this is a very special program because it's the last program of the year 2020. So if you're watching this program when it premieres, then we're about four days away from uh, New Year's. If you're watching this program much later on, because these programs, you know, go on uh, video on demand and they could be on basically for the rest of the, the life of this world, then just know that it was the last program of 2020 and what a year 2020 was. However, this program is going to be very exciting and this is why. What a great way to end the year. Uh, as uh, Paul uh, Long is founder and president of Kappa Studios Incorporated, a production and full service post facility in Burbank, California, Paul knows all sides of entertainment, the business, the technical and the creative. He recently produced the family comedy Selfie Dad, which had a theatrical release this summer. Uh, the documentary film Putin and pilots for several television series, World Grace, American Ingenuity, and Do Life Big. Now, uh, Paul has 35 years experience in film and television and a solid reputation in the industry as a post supervisor and service provider for major networks and studios like ABC, Disney, Warner Brothers, MGM, Sony, Columbia, Paramount, Fox, and Universal. I hope I got them all there. Now, I have two guests with me today. Brad Silverman credits include two films written and directed for Lionsgate, one of which, Grace Unplugged, was named Best Faith and Family Film of 2013 by Movie Guide, Focus on the Family, and the Dove Foundation. Brad is also the recipient of Movie Guide's Epiphany Award, uh, which, gives, uh, which is given to those responsible for the best, wholesome, uplifting, and inspiring movies and television programs. Most recently, Brad wrote and directed uh, the faith uh, comedy drama Selfie Dad, which was released again this summer. Gentlemen, welcome to Faith on Film. How are you guys doing? Great to be here. Thanks for having us, Isaac. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. We're glad to finally talk to you in this format. This is great. Yeah, yes, right. you know, th this program is intended to basically let people know all uh, the, well, that you guys are doing that are in the faith and family business. Now, normally, I'm going to do this completely different today because normally this is where you all get to share your story. But you guys sent me a video that really does the best job at telling the story of who you are and how you got into filmmaking. So if you don't mind, we're going to watch that video instead on this first segment, all right? You got it. Excellent. Roll right. the video. My goals were to make money, and uh, I was worshiping the money. That was, that was my point of interest, and I had identified, I felt like I wanted to become a millionaire by 31 years old. So that was a personal goal, and it, it just shows you the depth of like what, you know, how, how I was dialed in, you know? But God got a hold of both Paul and his wife, Karen, and their lives would never be the same. Coming to faith was something that started to kind of change me. I, early on, though, I just felt like I got to make the payroll. I got to get stuff done. What I didn't do is look down deep into it and say, well, now, is God honored through this? And what happened as the shows continued to spiral downward, back in those days, there was stuff that was marginal, but it, it, it's... It's received a new definition now in terms of the messaging, what's being shown. My wife and I just got so, just so bothered by it. It was just very heavy. Cool, cool, cool. You know, it's just crazy. We couldn't, and so we figured, okay, we're either gonna get out of business or we're gonna do it God's way. As a filmmaker, I'd been a client of Kappa up to that point, and that's when Paul brought me on full-time, and we made a formal announcement to anyone who cared that uh, Kappa would still offer the best there is in post-production, but we now existed and everything we did would be for the glory of God. Once we decided we're going this way, um, we kind of just felt that, you know, let, let's see what happens, where the chips fall, you know. Things didn't go well. A lot of people didn't come back. We, we lost business and we, it cost us money and, and, and you know, it was, it was definitely a, a struggle. Paul and I spent literally every morning praying together and uh, studying the Bible together. We were praying, Lord, bring us the people we can work for. <laughs> who, who are those people? Can you bring both of them today? You know, you know who, who is it that will come? And little by little, people started coming. We started seeing incredible filmmakers bring amazing projects to Kappa. It was just great. Love it. And more and more keep coming. And on top of all that, God opened the door for us to open our own production division. So we are now also creating our own original TV shows and films. 
I think we've seen, you know, just the provision of, of God in, in awesome ways. Paul and I still begin every single day with prayer and Bible study. Then we just go, we, uh, we do our best to serve the clients. It's not just us, it's everyone here at Kappa. Uh, this is truly a family here. We want to become that go-to place for people in the faith and family community. I just, I just think it's down to that. We can make it simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Some people need an entire post-production package, and other people, they just need a, a, a tiny polish. Whatever the need, however big or small, bring us your work. If you're a Christian project and you're working, bring it our way. We care about what you're doing. And if the producers that do projects, if we can help them get them done and make them better, now we're promulgating things into the culture that are good messages. So if there's one, could there be 20? What if there were 100? Would it be 500 people that are just creating product, TV shows, what, whatever you can imagine or dream up that honors God. If we can do that, that's my goal. And that's what's getting me out of bed. That's why I come down here. Welcome back to Faith on Film, the end of the year special. And I'm so excited about my guest today. Uh, gentlemen, so I saw the video uh, and there was a couple things I picked up on it. And you know what, I think I'm gonna start with you, Paul, because um, I know that you said your goal was making money. And uh, were you succeeding at that uh, before you kind of flipped the switch a little bit? Were you succeeding at making all that money? Yeah, well, it started out uh, and there was a lot of money to be made. and. Uh, it, this when we really started to say, hey, I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. uh, it, this is probably, I'd say around five years ago. So I've been in and out and up and down, but we've we've made money. We, you can't be here thirty years and and not have it work out. If, right. if that's what you're asking them. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I get it. But then at yeah. some point you decided that's not what you wanted to do, um, yeah. and so you decided you were going to do you know mostly just faith and family. That didn't yeah. seem like it went well, according to the video. Did, did you ever feel like, uh, you know what, maybe I, get, I better go back? Well, I never wanted to go back, but what my wife and I kind of really came down on, and, and Brad was a big part of this conversation mm -hmm. too, is we're either going to do it this way or just go out of business. We're not, we're not going to go back. And Brad used a term one day early on. He goes, yeah, man, we're burning the ships. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that's a good way to say it. We're burning the ships. And that image of burning the ships is powerful because – you're not going back. You're on the island. That's right. where you are. And so I liked the way that worked. And I liked the way uh, that image worked for me. You know, so I was able to really kind of say, OK, this is the way we need to go. And look, the Lord lifted us up. And what things, things like this force you, there's only two directions. You can start becoming a person of prayer or you can just become a person that's going to try to push it on through. And if you're a person of prayer in these trials, God just meets you. So we literally were like, okay, if it's not going to work out, it's okay. Wow. But I just can't do, I don't want to do the shows that we had been doing. I don't right. want to be putting my hand to stuff because of the power of the image and the story. Now, yeah, I, you know, you mentioned something right now, and I did hear on the video where you told your wife, we're either going to get out of business or we're going to do it God's <laughs> way. But one thing I noticed is when you finished saying that on the video, I noticed a little bit of emotion there. I think if they had kept the camera on you at that point, you might have started to tear up. What was going on there? I mean, why, why was there such emotion in that? Well, that's just good editing. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's where I'm trying to get the right place. But no, it, 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 was, it was just overcome by just the goodness mm -hmm. of God and how God just made a way. You know, you look at it yeah. and when you, you, you know, we've had all these protests, riots and all this other stuff going on. People's businesses are being destroyed. Sure. Their life's work. They spend their life working at something. And I spent my life working at stuff. And I, you know, I spent my life doing that. And it's like, okay, um, well, where do we go from here? And a lot of the entertainment, the things that I was putting my hand to, it was, it was like cotton candy. It's, it's gone. And then the, that was the good stuff. The other stuff, I just shouldn't have been doing it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I convinced myself that making the payroll – and I had to compromise in that area. And we, it, it, we've just gotten now where we just said, we're just going to wait. And so the Lord, the Lord is bringing that increase. It's been pretty exciting because to see people come through and go, oh, I'm coming over there. I heard about you. Mm -hmm. Or Brad, Brad and I have been talking and now I'm coming. I mean, it's just it's, a, it's an exciting and very gratifying thing. But it, it's a humble thing. Sure. Now, now Brad, you said you were a, a client of Kappa Studios in the past. 
what kind of content were you producing? Was it that type of content that he felt, uh, at least at that time, that he felt uh, he shouldn't be doing? Or, or were you already producing faith and family content? <laughs> well, he probably shouldn't have been doing it, but for not for the same reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could have locked the door, guys, <laughs> changed the locks on the building. But, um, but uh, no, actually, ironically, I was doing the exact projects that we're doing now. Yeah. Huh. Um, a couple of films, uh, No Greater Love, Grace Unplugged, yeah. maybe one in between, I don't remember. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I was bringing my little, you know, lower budget Christian movies to Paul. And I only knew Paul as a believer and as a brother. And we were it's still attending, attending the same church here in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So there was no mystery to me. What I didn't realize what was brewing in Paul and his wife Karen's heart at the time. So as I'm bringing my projects along and Paul is so welcoming to me and the projects. And he would say things like, Brad, do you want an office here? Do you want a parking space? Do you, what do you need? And, you know, I'm telling my wife, you know, Honey, I, I made it. I've arrived. You know, they're they're rolling out the red carpet for me. But in reality, I think looking back, and I don't know if Paul and I have ever even talked about this, is I think I think you were just looking for content like that. You know, Paul was seeing films that were unapologetically mm-hmm. honoring to God. Yeah. And so when I come on with my little projects, we just fit naturally. So yeah, the projects we were doing are exactly in line with what we're doing today. That's that's excellent. Now, you came to work eventually full time. Did you come to work full time before things started to kind of collapse? Because he did mention that, you know, once he changed into the faith and family for a while there, it actually, I mean, yeah. he lost all, all his business. Did you come full time before that or after it started to pick up? I mean, Paul could probably answer that better than me. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'd say <laughs> probably right around that time, kind of in during yeah, the transition. Yeah. We, I, I love, love, love to tell this story because Brad and I went, we went to man camp three years in a row. Yeah, there's a church, a men's retreat uh-huh. at our church. Okay. okay, so we go to man camp, and every time we go to man camp, we're talking about the Lord, and we're having a great time talking about working, and, and you know, Brad thought, yeah, gee, I'd love to get on board with you guys. I'd love to have you. We There was a very collegial sort of a conversation, nice. but uh, in the fullness of time, it was that third year that things all lined up, and when they did, by the time we got out of the mountains, it was done. It was like that, and we knew, <laughs> and he, I think he went, came here the, the next week, like Monday or something, he started. It was full time immediately, and we started going. And what we did is, in 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 letting people know that that was that time where we started to really feel the effects of burning the ships. And Brad, he can tell you the story. He came in. He was talking about announcing this, you know, because we were doing this show and that show. And then I got where I was saying, I don't want to do this show, and I probably ought to say no to this guy. And and so there was a transitional period in between there. But when when he came, we we put the hammer down. And, and we mm-hmm. said, okay, we've got to, we're just going to go this way now. And what I felt is at that time, Brad was there because he, as a writer and a director, he was the guy I wanted to work with to start to create stuff. And we both had interest in terms of be, being creative, doing creative things and, okay. and, and storytelling. We had that interest that we shared. And so I felt like this is an opportunity for me to work with him, build a department and a production unit that could really lay waste to what's going on here in, in the culture and start pointing out different. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, let's talk about one of those projects, which, of course, I see the poster right behind you. I don't know if that was the first one you guys collaborated on officially or, or not, but uh, I believe it was. And so we'll come back and talk about that and something else that, that hopefully you're okay talking about. But that is the fun film that you guys are beginning to work on. All right, folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Faith on Film, the last show of the year. And we're here today with Paul and Brad uh, from Kappa Studios. Uh, gentlemen, so you put this movie together, and I remember you invited me, uh, Paul, to, to screen it uh, when you guys were not even totally complete with it. I took my grandson to see it uh, with me, and he absolutely loved it, which told me that you guys have a winning thing when you can capture a young man uh, and his interest. So it sounded like it was going to be a great movie. Um, tell me a little bit about how that came about. Well, I, I, yeah. Wait, you, you go. Um, yeah, so we, we, we knew we wanted to make a first project that was sort of the, the first official Kappa production as a mm-hmm. feature film. And I mean, there was no mystery to it. We were just praying about it. We had another film that we were doing. You know how it goes, Isaac. You just, Sure. We had a number of projects in the works or, or, di- or different stages. And then we we just looked at different possibilities. And this one seemed like a great fit at a number of different levels, both at the budget level and the content level. It was kind of what we 
I think if there was anything else, if there was one thing that we both kind of, to, uh, of everything we agree on, one thing was we want to do something that was very truthful, very in your face, very unapologetic in its messaging, yeah. but also funny. Yeah. And I think it was your wife, Karen, that it was Karen that, that I, was, I never came up with the, the idea of truth and humor together. So truth and humor, truth and humor. So with that as sort of a, a theme, I come from a almost pure comedy background. So it felt like a good fit to do something that was funny, but also really in your face with the messaging and with the humor, hopefully diffusing that it's in sure. your face. Well, now I know that uh, the, in, uh, the intent was to release it theatrically in the summer, which you did. But at the same time, COVID hit. How did that affect what your plans were for the film? Please. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, that that is um, that is a fine question. <laughs> we we, uh, we were slated to go out theatrically. We had our P and A funds ready to go, mm -hmm. and we started meeting, having all our meetings, and we moved the date mm. from April twenty fourth, which was right at the beginning of this mm -hmm. disastrous year in terms of the COVID, and it was moved down to June, Father's Day weekend, June 19th. Right. And um, we started out thinking we were going to get in the theater. It was all planned. We are you know, pretty excited about it, at least I was. I, I, he, he maybe <laughs> he's, uh, he doesn't get theater. excited yeah. too easy. But yeah, <laughs> I was pretty excited about it, you know, and I thought, well, this is great. We're projecting a message. This is, we're going to, we're going to weave truth and humor together. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We're going to put that out. Yay. The Lord is going to be honored there through this project. That's what we thought. And God, in his power, glory, and wisdom, decided, uh-uh, you're not doing that. And so we went out on all the streaming platforms, and we got into Walmart, and all those things happened. But I think we were mercifully protected because there were millions of dollars queued up to be spent for p and marketing mm -hmm. for the theatrical release. And had we not moved that date early on, we would have been. We would have spent most of our money at that time. It would have been like a month, maybe a few weeks left. Yeah, we would have spent all. Sorry, like we would have spent all the money for theatrical release. That would have happened. And then the theaters would have shut down, and it would all have been for loss. So God spared us by having the date being moved. Yeah. yeah. They didn't spend all the money. So we we look back. I'm obviously in a perfect scenario. You know, we would have been great if COVID never hit, right? <laughs> yeah. But, um. But but in our little world, it actually we were protected. Yeah. from major negative effects of it so we're really grateful yeah that's right it, it, was, fair yeah, to say? it was it was a mercy of god incredible yep. and it didn't have to be that way so now we say okay well what do we do now so we are walking out this whole adventure in ways uh each day just say okay well what's it going to be how do you want us to go and there's some stuff that we hope will come back on your show another day to announce because there's some pretty fancy stuff that is up ahead as it relates to selfie dad and, and all you know there's a lot of stuff but we've had a lot of neat things happen. We've um, been approached by a group that um, wanted to have us go out in Spanish language. And we said, well, we don't have money for that. And they said, we're taking care of it. So wow. we have we have a Spanish language outreach that's just starting now, which we never had thought of. Our distributor did not want to do that. We wanted to, but he would not allow it. Here we are. We are now going out in different Spanish. Things. We've had a uh, worldwide press tour for Selfie Dad in Spanish, all Latin American countries. So that's the Lord all the way. And this guy Absolutely. had seen the movie and he's like, you know what? This really impacted me. This movie has got to get out. And I want I want all the Latino communities across the country to see this movie. So this is what I'm saying. It's just, it's awesome. And so we're now, we've moved out of trying to move it down the track with our own hands. We've been prevented and now God is doing it all the way. So what's the best ways for people to kind of just keep in tune with what's happening so they'll know where they can see it, uh, you know, where they can see it here in America, how they can see it uh, in the Spanish version. What's the best way to follow it? Yeah. Well, we have a number of projects that we're involved with at Kappa. You know, Kappa, yes, that that's one that we produced in-house, but mm -hmm. I would say, describe it this way, Isaac, that there are some projects that we are a big part of, and there are many projects that we are a support or part of, if that makes sense. So, for example, The Chosen, the TV series right. The Chosen, or the films Unplanned, going you know far back to God's Not Dead, the same people that did it. So with all these projects, I would say, honestly, the best way is probably through social media. Anyone's welcome to go to our website, kappastudios.com. Right. But our website of our, our you know social media, uh, Kappa Studios, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. Fantastic. Yeah, that'd be great because they can go there and know everything that you're doing, not only with this film, but with all the films that you're doing. Now, we're okay. really almost out of time, but I kind of wanted to at least touch a little bit on this film fund. 
What are you doing yeah. with that? Are you trying to raise money to produce more films? Uh, is it to get other filmmakers to be a part of this? How is that working? Well, we only well, got we, about a minute. Yeah, yeah well, I'll try to make it brief. We've realized that we need to empower filmmakers. Okay. Filmmakers spend one to three years, two or three years on average. A lot of them run out of money in the faith community. We wanted to create a fund where we can grant them, gift them. We don't ask for anything. We don't want them mm -hmm. points in their show, nothing. Wow. Just help them get their project out if it's a thing that's speaking Christ in the culture. And we want to help them do it faster. We need to get more out now yeah. more than ever. We need to probably get that message out okay. now. So that's the basic thing. It's a pay it forward. Uh, we're hoping to have people donate to us. We're going to do more of these projects. We're doing it now anyhow. We want to expand it. Okay. Expand it. And well, so, yeah, you can go up there and... Um, that, that's terrific. It's something that's been very desperately needed. Uh, you know what? You, I'm definitely going to have to have you come back and maybe talk a little bit more about that. And by then you'll probably be more prepared yeah. with more information anyway. But uh, I thank you for being a part of my end of the year show. Next year is uh, projected, I think, to be a wonderful new year. Uh, hopefully we'll be done with all this, uh, all this election stuff and the uh, COVID stuff and any other bad stuff that has been happening. And yeah. just, I, I project for a great new year. All right. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Isaac is the best you, man. You, Thanks you, for having us. Thank, thank you, you, folks. Don't go away. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Faith on Film. I'm so grateful to you that you've joined me for this last episode of the year 2020. I can't wait to see what God has in store for Faith on Film for next year. Now, if you want to keep up with what's going on, just follow me on Facebook. Instagram and Twitter at Faith on Film TV. That's at Faith on Film TV. And of course, if you want to write me a little note, just write me at Faith on Film TV at gmail.com. That's Faith on Film TV at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out Parables, a place where you can watch some great movies, documentaries, reality shows, just a lot of great content for you and your family. And it's free. You simply go to parables.tv and register. That's parables.tv. Well, we have come to the end of this show and the end of the year. So until next year or next week, Take care.